Mm. Hello. Uh, thank you for sitting back and uh, the, of course, um, session uh, as I've handled, you know, uh, has some elements that uh, perhaps I might also mention here because for those of us who um, don't know, the Africa Knowledge Initiative was one of the studies they had to carry out to, you know, come about the Africa Group um, uh, pilot um, initiative. So um, this project, African Knowledge Initiative, was conceived by three organizations, namely the Wikimedia Foundation, the AU, and then the ANF um, to an, an extent. And why was you know the partnership deemed fit? So the AU has um, at least three archives that we were able to uh, access with a lot of resources uh, ranging from mission reports, ranging from you know some okay some uh maybe government initiatives and whatnot. But then they are just um, sitting ducks uh, on the AUs or maybe drives or w w whatever online space they had the archives hosted. So the Wikimedia Foundation, you know, found a niche ground through the AUs um, Agenda 2063 for those of us who know the details, where of course it highlights, not just to mention, but if, if a few, making sure that Af Africa is um, properly documented across the digital space. And when you talk about the digital space, it's easy to think about the Wikipedia and of course other Wikimedia um, projects, owing to the fact that uh, you rarely search for a topic on Google without maybe seeing a wiki, a wiki as um, maybe top 10 or top five of the um, responses or results. But then, the um, project, this is not working, Jalan. Yeah. The um, project is to leverage three African Union holidays uh, for content creation, uh, namely the Africa Youth Month, the Wangari Matai slash what we now call Africa Environment Wiki Project, and the Africa Day. But then it wasn't just the AU the Wikimedia Foundation and the ANF. There were also, you know, uh, our fellow Wikimedians and the allied organizations that were part and parcel of the work that we did. Uh, the likes of Wikivibrance, Wiki in Africa, uh, Wikimedia Botswana, uh, Wikimedia Cote d'Ivoire, Open Foundation West Africa. They were really, really instrumental in, you know, making sure that the project uh, was a success in their own um, capacity. So, you know, what is the AKI really about? Of course, focusing on using resources uh, from the African Union's archives to close the knowledge and content gap that exists about the continent on the internet, leveraging Wikipedia and other Wikimedia projects. And like I had mentioned earlier, um, we had to you know, go by the three AU holidays, uh, Africa Youth Day, which uh, ideally on 1st November, but we use the entire month and even went beyond. The environment slash Wangari Matai, which we now call Africa Environment on 3rd March, but the whole March was ours. And we even cut into, uh, you know, the, the next month. And then the Africa Day, which is um, ideally on 25th of May, so why do we, you know, why did we decide to go on on this um, journey? To a large extent, um, when you go on the internet to read about Africa, if maybe if if, if there are hundred things written about Africa on the internet, you might be shocked to find out that maybe seventy five or eighty were written by non Africans or maybe some passers by who maybe visited. Um, a safari in Cape Town or Kenya, and then they go back, sit behind their laptop and tell you all about Kenya from just, you know, backpacking to Kenya and coming back. 
So it's it's okay for, for them to try that, by the way. But then they would dish just a fragment of what, let's say, Kenya or wherever they visited is really ab about. So the API, like I fondly call it, uh, also on the, you know uh, focuses on giving Africans the opportunity to be you know on the front line of the storytelling. I I I have this instance. So there is a river Niger in Nigeria. Those of us who know, you, you may have heard that Mongo Park said he found or he discovered river Niger, and some of our ancestors swam and fished in that river. Why was it possible for him to say that? And maybe so did to the Western media, just because he had a press at his beck and call back home. I mean, if there were Wikipedia as far back as then, he wouldn't say so because maybe somebody, maybe from that community, would have found a way to document either in a local language or some other intentional language that there is, in fact, something like this just next door. But then Mongo packed him all the way to Nigeria, took pictures, went back, and told people, hey, I discovered you by Niger. So that sort of, you know, misconstrued the whole thing because. Someone who didn't know would think, okay, he just came and uh, maybe brought um, a bulldozer and some caterpillars and created a waterway and River Niger just came through. Well, that, that's not the case. So, and then who uh, happens to be involved? Of course, the Wikimedia Foundation, the AU, um, and then uh, the, the African Filter. So, to, of course, navigate these projects down to our local communities to make sure that the content creation of course, um, included contributions from local uh, Wikimedians. We, of course, had to go by, uh, you know, recruiting, implementing partners. You had seen the logos of the likes of Wiki by Benz, uh, uh, Wiki in Africa, uh, and the rest of what? So we, uh, of course, through an open call, had, I think, over 30 or thereabouts um, organizations who applied. But then when we looked at what we we're trying to achieve through the um, project and the various campaigns, these guys looked like, you know, the best bets. So for the Africa Youth 2022, we, of course, um, selected the Wikivirus project to work in collaboration uh, in, uh, with the support of our Wikimedia communities like the Botswana. And for Africa Environment Day 2023, the Wiki in Africa team and, of course, the Wikimedia Code uh, were selected for that. And then for Africa Day 2023, the implement partner was um, Open Foundation West Africa. So just to give you a glimpse, because we, of course, the AU, the Wikimedia Foundation and uh, the ANF, uh, um, you know, we, we didn't do this on our own. It wouldn't have been very possible without the implementing partners who of course had to reach back to their local contacts in the various locations where they op operate to you know make things happen so uh this as a result of the contributors of all these persons i just mentioned or all these organizations we were able to have you know these numbers uh, please, I would like to say that this is still inconclusive because our metric tools, like we know, uh, <laughs> not so fun. So um, I'm, I'm, I'm yet to finish. The only thing I've, I've left out here, which is yet to be concluded, is the number of uh, new contributors or new new editors that you know started editing thanks to the campaign or the uh, AKI project. So with time, as soon as I'm able to collate all those. I will also see ways to have that um, communicated. So we have a total of, or we had a total of 47, you know, local organizers, both uh, on the continent and outside. Because I recall vividly, the Wikivibans through the Africa Month was able to engage um, Wikimedia IT, and then um, I think Ofra during their their round of campaign was able to. Okay, Wikimedia IT, Afro Crowd, yes, from the Caribbean and the US. And then the, the Afro team was able to bring on board the Nazi Wikipedia from Switzerland. You know, so it wasn't just about uh, Africans per se, 
we had other, you know, African knowledge enthusiasts who joined us from the diaspora. And then we had a total of 53 events, both online and offline, all through the campaign. And then uh, on the program dashboard, we recorded uh, 54 programs. And the number of editors, this way it gets interesting because we, of course, had everybody signed onto the dashboard. We noticed that from the campaign, there were at least 1,467 editors. So when Asaf, you know, was highlighting an editor who mentioned it's, it's a very uh, relatable subject because we, of course, the first campaign was the, the Africa Youth Month, but then we weren't able to get so many people to transition from the Africa Youth Month to the Africa environment and then down to the last campaign. So it's, it's, it's worrisome. If, if I were to show you maybe the number of persons or the percentage who transited from the first campaign to the last, you, you might get a clearer picture of what Asaf was trying to explain. And then for, for references added, we had about um, 16,210 references from various um, sources, both the ones we were able to find on um, the AU archives and the secondary sources we found outside too. And then the number of Wikipedia articles created uh, is about 12,530. And I was able to go to the dashboard to download the CSV files I noticed that the following language Wikipedia were Im impacted. English Wikipedia, also French, Tree, Akan, Dagani, Gurene, Igbo, Swahili, uh, I think this is Fante, uh, Kenya, Rwanda, Yoruba, Setswana, uh, I don't know what <laughs> one. And then, uh, and there were also some, uh, you know, new language Wikipedia that came through, but then they are still in incubation and as such couldn't be tracked on the um, dashboard. And then beyond the Wikipedia, of course, we also had input on Wikicode, English and French Wikicode extensively, and we had a total of 416 contributions on Wikicode. Uh, and then that's for, for new ones. And then about 208 were improved on Wikicode, ranging from English to French Wikipedia, and then Igbo, Wiki, uh, sorry, French Wikicode, Igbo Wikicode, and English Wikicode. And then improved articles were over 30,000. You know, those that maybe had links, citations added, uh, I think uh, pictures too for some, but then these were uh, the number of uh, Wikipedia, language Wikipedias that were impacted to, to that effect. And then while we're tracking real time, we noticed that the articles uh, improved and created have been viewed over 26 million times within the campaign rounds. We didn't track beyond the campaign rounds. So this, you know, Sort of retrace that perhaps uh, those gaps were really yearning to be closed because people were visiting uh, those articles, trying to you know read and know what they were about. Of course, we had um, input on Wiki data two revisions about fifty two thousand, and then we created uh, new items about two thousand five hundred plus, and then claims about seventeen thousand. Descriptions were also added labels uh, 5000 and then total number of interwiki links added were a total of uh, 1481 but then there were really uh, big challenges that we experienced on this project and we had an earlier session with the wikipedia admins two from english and one from arabic uh, wikipedia we 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 found that that there is serious um gap when when you talk about skills on the african continent which was why you know when i heard about the um africa group um, pilot initiative it, it was really a welcome uh development uh, to my ears a lot of people on the continent you know they are in a hurry to edit that just it and then the minute you are in a hurry to edit 
you 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 miss you know the vital points about editing and this person goes in and tries to edit and then gets the shocker that oh they are laying my rules <laughs> and all that <laughs> some some who want to have it easy relegate really themselves to maybe their local language Wikipedia which is cool you know playing within your own backyard but then it would stunt your knowledge when it comes to learning you know the nitty gritties of Wikipedia ed editing and then something interesting happened I think it was with the Botswana community when they're trying to create a, a climate article. You know, there was back and forth, but I, I was happy to see that they persevered, learned, improved the article. And to today, the article still stands. And in, in terms of gap, we really noticed a lot, especially on the African environment uh, campaign, where I think out of the 54 African countries, only about three had a climate report on, on Wikipedia. But that has changed thanks to the Wiki in, in, in Africa team on the African Environment uh, Wiki project. We've not gotten a whole 54 yet, but it's no more three. That's the good news. <laughs> it's no more three. <laughs> it's no more three. And maybe someday with time, we get to where we perhaps can say 30, 40, or maybe the whole um, 54. So there, there is a representation uh, of Wiki by Brancet by the person of Euphemia. So please come to the front because uh, if, if if these guys who are very close to the you know local editors they don't tell you their challenges and then there's a Frances who is a very unique guest if you ask me please come on Frances uh, came all the way from Spain this afternoon <laughs> thank you <laughs> uh, we should have someone from the Wiki in Africa team Isla thank you. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't know if Eugene is here. We're hoping uh, we would have joined us, but unfortunately, uh, she couldn't make it. So I think Eugene was meant to represent her because he was also uh, very, very instrumental on the Africa Day campaign. So please, you can have the mic. Thank you. Wait. So just um you know as brief as possible because uh nobody would understand the plight of you know having this sort of campaign. You can come here, Eugene, with um a community that has the level of skill gap that we saw. No nobody will really understand that until you share that story with them because it's easy to think, oh, we get the story, we get what the problem is. But then in terms of approach, uh, perhaps we don't get it yet. Or the various means of approach. I, 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 I was very happy when Asaf was, you know, sharing the, the various uh, means through which you could contribute and, 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 and all that. But then what if there are other options that we could collectively explore and enjoy to still achieve success? across board so uh perhaps i should uh give you first please the the challenges you experienced on the campaign and please feel free to see it thank you <laughs> okay thank you sitting with the... Go ahead. hi everyone um so i had the privilege of um implementing the Africa Day uh, with the Wikivibrance team as uh, a volunteer. And because this was the first time that we had that opportunity to really work on a project of that scale in Africa. And then we are also a growing community, small, we just a team of six who are just volunteer, Francis, with me here, uh, is part of that team. And we have about four other people who are not here, scattered um, across uh, different communities uh, in Africa and beyond. And this was happening at a time that we didn't really have all the resources uh, we needed for that uh, campaign, starting off with the funds. And um, these points came a little bit late, and there was a time set for this campaign to happen. 
And given that Wiki Vibrance didn't really have any source of funding, it was really very uh, tricky to convince other communities who are also volunteers to run a project that actually came with a set of um, um, deliverables. We were expected to really dish out over a short period of time. And that convince, convincing them was like the hardest part. Um, but um, in as much as it was challenging, it was also an opportunity for us to be creative and go through the process. So for most of these communities, uh, they were really, um, you know, they didn't have any other option. Of course, we heard about two or three who opted out because there were no funds at that point in time to really engage young people uh, in their communities, which was really important for them. But then we also have uh, some of the communities who stick around, use their own um, community funds, some have to use their own personal funds. And I'm happy uh, Florence is here. I remember uh, that particular question from her when she asked me uh, a very surprising question. And I must be honest, we didn't think about that as at the time we were having that um, campaign. And the thing she said to me was, um, if you went on to um, implement this campaign without any funds, and then um, telling these communities to go ahead uh, to uh, implement these activities. How and when are you sure the funds are going to come? And if what if they don't come? And and, and that was really um, mind blowing because at that point we really didn't, didn't think about that part of what if it didn't come, right? Because I mean something we are doing for the very first time a lot of our partners who we are involved. Um, we we really didn't think about that, but. That was like how difficult it was at that point in time. But aside from also having uh, the funds available, it was also about having support for the implementing partner. Like I mentioned, Wiki Vibrance is still young and still growing. We didn't have any funds. So like getting volunteers to work, to deliver on something that like very reliable approach. And this was also something we had to deal with. And again, yes, uh, it's called an African Union um, collaboration, but we also didn't have even a feel of that African Union presence <laughs> in, trying, in trying to really um, show the work we are doing. Um, on the different Wikimedia projects. And that for us was also not uh, very uh, fun. So, and then other forms of visibility, I think, which we also think that that is very important for not just the campaign, but for young people in the movement, because if we are saying we need to attract more young people, we also need to bear in mind that young people are the ones that will attract other young people, and we need to give them that space to really uh, create that attraction for other young people. So um, these were um, some of the challenges we had, and then the time crunch as well. Uh, like Cesar rightly mentioned, it was supposed to be a big uh, campaign celebrating Africa Day, but it was a month long campaign because uh, we wanted to have uh, communities also drive this uh, according to their uh, different convenient times. I don't know, Cesar, if you want me to proceed, but no, I mean, that's actually fine because I, I would, of course, want um, uh, Isla to maybe talk about the um all the challenges uh, there were many challenges but but then of, of, of course trying to get the funds to the implementing partners and then local organizers like do you guys know how difficult it is to move funds around africa like from one country to the other in fact as of uh was it not what june as of june this year some local organizers, you know, still had their funds hanging. It had been sent already, you know, and these were guys who perhaps out of goodwill, because this yeah, on, on this project, I, I, I saw how much having the goodwill could actually help with in this movement. You know, just tell somebody to jump and the person takes your words for it and jumps. No guarantee of when the funds will come and things like that, you know. 
So, Ayla, please, uh, I would, you know, I uh, want you to maybe extensively talk about the the uh, training gap, you know, skills gap, because I, I witnessed something in Rwanda last year for the first school, another way. We have a Baba event that sort of launched this AKI in Rwanda. And I found how useful language focus training could be in the movement. Let's say you're talking about English Wikipedia. You know, someone from Rwanda could easily get what we're saying if you're having training in Kenya, Rwanda. Very easily. We had some training sessions too also and it was fun listening to them explain stuff to each other in local languages and i noticed it's, it's a culture with them which is really fun i was on one of the open street map sessions online and these guys were amazing so perhaps this is something we could rethink across africa and see how it could benefit us so i like please go ahead Okay, so um, I think we all shared some some very key pain, in fact, agonizing points, which were the funding, the um, organization, all sorts of stuff. So I don't want to go over what you feel is so beautifully articulated. Um, but there was also uh, how we wanted to run it was also as kind of like a, an introduction, because a lot of the people who joined with us were almost new, like new groups or new volunteer groups who also, there was an open call for um, for funding, very minimal funding to host um, events like everybody did. But we had a very structured kind of way of trying to onboard people from that. And it was quite amazing, just even very basic stuff. And I'm not trying to belittle people, but it's about kind of like stuff like, you know, in order to pay people, you have to have an address. And so they wouldn't put physical addresses. And there was like just very basic kind of administrative stuff, which was very easy. You, everyone would feel would be quite easy, it became very big sticking points. We had a big problem with trying to transfer all the money um, through the South African Reserve Bank, Reserve Bank system um, once it had arrived. And um, it took ages there was also like lovely little anomalies with um with nigerian banks <laughs> that's one doesn't want to expect um and some people yes of course they were waiting afterwards we had to fight we had to actually get the reserve bank involved in south africa for them this money to be released in nigeria so there was like a whole load of different other elements but from a quality point of view um it's always really difficult, and I think it's very easy for us um, who are very privileged to speak like either English or French, to because we can review those the quality of those those languages. Um, but we also noticed that there were a lot of um, obviously uh, edits that were made to other languages, as Cesar uh, showed, and it was very difficult for us to assess the quality of those and the relevance. Um, mostly because a lot of the, as we know, because of the the imbalance in in um, geopolitics and everything, a lot of those smaller languages are not easy. Like Google, you know, you can't Google translate them just to even see if the the topic is relevant or whatever or how it's being managed. Um, so so it was difficult for us to be able to assess that quality, but it was also very tricky um, for. You know, for us to to police that across like the twenty different, we had seventeen um, local events that you know local partners that we worked with. Um, given the time constraints, given all of those, we would have loved to have had at least some basic online training, just in how our expectations. We did do a lot of um, we did three um, sessions, which were um, webinars in order to, to help build how to speak about climate change, how to speak about what are the best edits to do, because so, because we've had some prior issues um, that had been flagged for us. So we were, at least we were prepared to be able to, to do those and have um, some of Wikipedia's expert writers be able to share their knowledge, which I think was very important to, to that. Otherwise, it would have been more difficult, I think. 
but it wasn't plants. I don't know if you have anything else to add on that. There's like an endless list that we could go through. But otherwise, I, I mean, the thing is that the, the topic is, and well, in our case, it was African environment, um, and the topic is so damn important. Um, the information on Africa is so outdated. It really, really um, was a, an epic kind of start. And we've literally just, we haven't even, we've kind of sighted the iceberg. We haven't even kind of really dug in. Um, but I think that it's, it's a, it was an incredible uh, insight. And also, sorry, the other thing is that it gave us an opportunity not only to talk to we got surveys from the from the organizers back um about their challenges and everything and then we also managed to get um a survey about um the what were the challenges of individuals so why don't because the majority of african we assume that the uh, a lot of us who are Wikipedians go, oh no, they must have like you know, it's easy. They just go home and then they just you know fiddle on their computers and <laughs> upload whatever. But the majority of people don't have that. We know that, like in Africa, that it's that they only will edit at a um, at an organized event because there is support, because the data, because there is the tech, because there is there's all of these other factors that layer into why there is not. Um, like you know, ongoing or continuing support, and so I think or um, editing. So I think those were there were some very very valuable lessons learned amongst the challenges. So <laughs> I don't know if that answers the question. Yes, Ayla, thank you so much, <laughs> and uh, Eugene. So uh, because we usually talk about uh, you know external partnerships, and I know for sure that at least. Each company round enjoyed one sort of external partnership or the other. So please let us know how you guys managed your SNOP, um, you know, to secure some at offer. Okay, so um initially, um, you know that our external partnership was basically with the AUFS, that's what you gave us. And we we're also supposed to partner with Aflia, but um we started on the good notes. I mean, we had and some talks on how exactly we are going to um, navigate um, this whole project, but it didn't go through because um, our objectives were sort of um, not similar, let me just say that. So we had to um, look for um, other um, partnerships as well. So we uh, went to tend to talk to the um, Africa um, Trade Union in Ghana, the representative in Ghana. They came on board to partner with us. And during our lunch, we were fortunate enough to have the director to, you know, uh, speak to everyone um, about it. And um, regarding the challenges, um, the major challenge I would say was that I was trying to um, make sure that participants of you know the campaign would use AU resources when they are contributing on wiki um, platforms. It was a huge challenge for us because even though the theme was um, Africa, I mean the campaign was Africa Blue campaign, and the theme was about Africa free trade and all, people were you know focusing about trade activities in their respective countries and then all that. We are not saying that we shouldn't do that, but you know, we have a partner that we are working with, which is the African Union, and they give us free resources. And here is the case where we are we are literally begging, we are literally begging them to use these resources to contribute to Wiki. And it was it was a huge challenge. But then again, I think we we sort of um use a, a new strategy instead of using just Wikipedia and other platforms, uh, we use Wiki quotes. Yeah. Yes, yes, and that sort of worked. Funny enough, that sort of worked, and people um, contributed on that more. And that was a major, a major, major challenge. Aside the funding bits, I don't know if you want to talk about that. Mm, of course not. <laughs> so you know, the, the, the working on this uh, retreats the fact that that um, you know we really should engage outside stakeholders more. We, as Wikimedians, we can't continue to work in silos. We can't. We need to drag in these guys by all means, because forget maybe that some of them have very robust names and branding. They don't get this. 
<laughs> you know, when when you you know try to let them understand why we do what we do, not many of them can actually say, okay, I get this, and we can hold hands and walk through this. Let me give you an instance. So we had um, access to three AU archives. And when I went through the three of them, I just told the knowledge management team, ah, this thing is not working. You know, you guys need to find a way to document your stuff to be more open. I think these guys were the luckiest because by the time they navigated through the whole bureaucracy and came about making one of the archives look good, you know, they really, you know, remembered it. You had distinctive size for magazines. You had distinctive size for books. You had distinctive size for reports from missions and meetings and all. I think they were the ones that really enjoyed the archives. <laughs> but then, you know, the other two archives are still looking like they are from the 18th century. So, <laughs> and they, they sort of just, you know, handed them to us, take, go and do whatever we wish. You know, it's not I, I I do. If if you want me to access resources from the archives, how about you have someone from the knowledge management team show me how it works? You know, this is how you can narrow down your searches. This is where to find what if you want to find resources that are uniquely in Arabic. This is where to, or how to go about it because they have a lot. And also, this campaign with all these um statistics, we barely scratched up to two percent of what they have there. They have hundreds of thousands of things archived, sitting ducks there, gathering dust. And, you know, they had us to see through or see, see, see what it looks like. And, you know, they didn't really help us that much. But that being said, I like the fact that, you know, Ifemia, you, you mentioned that perhaps we need to find better ways to work with them, which, you know, makes me re retreat again. We, we need to keep engaging outsiders to be part of what we do. They need to get it from now going forward. We can't afford to, you know, continue working in um, silos and hope that tomorrow when we reach out to, let's say, another Pan-African organization that they will just get where we're headed with what we're trying to do and uh, things like that. Yeah. So, uh, Ayla, I think there was another partnership from one of the women organizations. I've, I've, I've forgotten their name. Women in Climate? Yeah. Okay, please. Perhaps because, uh, you know, those are uh, strategic partnerships that I, I really hope that, you know, in, in, in Africa, we, we can have more of such. Um, so... We had a little bit of a tricky system with the um, with the the partnerships, uh, external partnerships kind of um, discussion. So we went, we had a, a hit list basically, uh, for lack of a better word, of I think it was fifty around about fifty organizations, activists, um, uh, advocacy groups, all sorts who were working across um, Africa in within climate and environment. Uh, we sent out pretty much cold calling letters to them um, in emails uh, requesting that they join us. Uh, we then followed up like three, three five times, um, but the deadlines were very tight. So in a way, as everybody know, partnership is about trust. It's about building trust. It's about time, the time to get to know people. And it's very, very difficult just doing a cold call. Of course, they're going to go, yeah, that's great. Let's join on Wikipedia. Oh, it would be fab. <laughs> but they don't know how to, and they don't know like what is involved. Um, as we know, they've, I mean, even one of the, part the like implementing partners, had, not implementing the kind of like project partners, had um, no idea about uh, copyright or uh, about attribution. Um, so it basically became... Uh, so we did have partners, and um, in by the end, we had some resources that were provided. Thank you. Um, that were provided, but they were just, uh, in a way, as, as, um, assimilated into the other resources that Florence and um, members of the team kind of like pulled out of the ether because the AU <laughs> resources were very small. Um, 
And that's fine because we need as much up-to-date information as possible. Um, but we were, I think the issue is that we just didn't have the time to build the relationship with the partners that we needed in order to, and I think that's why in many, it needs to be these, these projects that we've just done as a pilot need to be ongoing and long-term because otherwise we just cannot, you can't just expect somebody to just drop everything for the next three weeks and dig out stuff and host, you know, host a potential editathon with their network about something that they in a, an entirely new space you know it's just it's really not feasible so even though they shared resources which was that's pretty much as far as we could go with them in this space um but if we had long-term planning involved then we could do that and we were given the go-ahead literally 20 days after the date we were meant to start. So I don't like us a bit of a yes. Anyway, <laughs> we learn from life. Thank you so much. And uh, uh, for sex, so, you know, the role of uh, languages, of course, when it comes to <laughs> international campaigns, you know, the, the role that languages play cannot be uh, uh, overemphasized, you know, looking at how, of course, the Wikibibrance uh, team handled the Africa Youth Month, you know, how best, or do you have suggestions around how perhaps the foundation can better support a campaign like this to happen internationally? Of course, taking uh, into recognition the linguistic um, needs. Well, here I will throw the ball away. I mean, you asked about the foundation's role, and perhaps it's not the role of the foundation of perhaps. doing that. I mean, uh, after all, of course, the Wikimedia Foundation does organize a uh, campaign of their own, but perhaps what we should do is what we are doing is just to organize a campaign. And then, uh, as, uh, as I said, uh, you learn from life, no? In our case, uh, you know, we give is related to young people. The thing with young people is that uh, whoever who has uh, seen uh, some statistics knows that the old people are in Europe and the young people are here in Africa. No, so uh, basically it means that uh, our main uh, communities or the communities that join our call um, either speak English or French, which are the two uh, two main colonial languages in in, in our context. And that meant that we had to be fluent in both languages. It's not something that we've done perfectly because, uh, you know, our support to the French speaking communities is not as good as the support that we might uh, give to the English speaking communities. And this is something that uh, in every report we've done, we always say we need to improve here. But, uh, I mean, uh, as everybody believe knows, I'm not a, a French native speaker, not at all. I mean, I learned French when I was 12 or so. But the thing is that if you speak the people's language, uh, you know, people feel, I mean, it's not that they feel more welcome or whatever, that they do actually feel more welcome, but it's that you are speaking to them. That, that's it. I mean, of course, in Africa, there are a lot of languages that we can't speak all because I believe it will be impossible, just as it is impossible to speak any uh, language in Europe. But, uh, I mean, it's that, that's the point. No? At least, uh, and we have far more languages here. I mean, we have uh, Portuguese-speaking communities. We have Arabic-speaking communities, and I will add more. There are uh, Spanish-speaking uh, lands in, in Africa, and we don't have uh, Wikimedia communities there because of many sociopolitical issues that I'm not going to analyze. Uh, but the thing, um, you know, uh, Spanish Guinea was uh, Spain up to 50 years ago or so. So I think or 16 now. Uh, the thing is that, uh, Equatorial Guinea, sorry, I used the colonial name. Uh, the thing is that, uh, I mean, the very first step to foundation of whoever, uh, it should be to speak to the people to their own, in, in their own language, or at least in a language that they can understand, and from there it's building, because otherwise they are excluded. And uh, speaking of exclusion, we will take more than the 10 minutes that we were told before that we have left. Thanks so much, Frances. Uh, we have five minutes in case anybody has questions to maybe ask if maybe there are things you would love any of these implementing partners to clarify in terms of how they navigate the very troubled waters. <laughs> 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 
uh, guys, like now we could laugh about it, but we have people on their toes morning, afternoon, and night. <laughs> well, the the various campaign rounds were, were going on. If not, of course, you could always uh, reach out to them because uh, their experiences and the skill set they, they, they all possess were very instrumental to you know these good numbers we are looking at. But then there's always room for improvement. Florence, you have a question? Okay. Mm -hmm. Visually. Yes. Yeah. Um, I'm still not sure I'm laughing about it now, even now. More gray hair. Uh two things. Uh the first uh the first takeout is um is really Asaf after you presented the global the the big funeral and I was Extremely happy, I must say, when you announced this at more or less at Wikimania, I think. Uh, because one of the takeaways that we have been several years without organizing an event related to Wikipedia itself. We have been working on Wikiquotes for four years now. It's working pretty well. Commons as well. Um, but not Wikipedia. And uh, we were asked to have half of the community being rather new community, not trying to get always the old usual guys. And I must say that was really a struggle. Uh, and we could see how much they were missing the basics. And we could not help one of them for that. So this thing, I think, is going to be super precious. Uh, we have chosen a theme which I thought would be rather fairly easy to jump in, because the, the idea was to have an article about climate change in country uh, for all participating country. And this is notable. So the article did not exist at all. It is true, but all of them are notable. And all of them already have a structure for the other existing uh, countries. So before the event, I did one myself for Ethiopia. So I did climate change in Ethiopia and looked at all the resources. I thought, this is feasible. This was my perception. This is feasible. And when I saw how much it was difficult afterwards for the teams, so you mentioned the Botswana one, they did an awesome job. They did it, but they went through it. We went in a talk page, we had some Twitch, and we managed to go there. But many of the other teams, they either, either didn't try, or they went to try to have the easy way, like don't buy feeds about people. Just that yeah, that's supposed to be the easy way. So yeah, thank you very much for that one. Super, super important. The other thing I wanted to mention is um, that had been quite a while before we did some micro funding for local teams. And uh, we tried to do it very seriously with um, laying out all the expectation on both sides, having contractual agreement and so on. And we were and we had some obligation on, on the contractual agreement. And I must say that half of the team really made the effort to respect that to a certain extent. And half of the team actually, seriously at this point, I think they didn't care. Either they didn't care or they didn't they didn't understand what we're asking for. And that was a little bit uh, of trouble for me, thinking that all these communities they didn't they didn't have the the understanding of what was a report. Simply that. Doing a report, what did we do? How did we do it? with which people, which activities, what were the challenges we met, what do we need, and maybe how we spend the money, that not be bonus. Just one thing, it was not a big thing, like an A4, and even that, we couldn't get it. And I still do not really know what was the problem, because these people in particular, we try to, of course, get to them, ask them, ask again, and talk to them again, and, Nothing. So, so that's the, the other thing is that if we do such project again in the future, we have to think ahead. And we also have some training, simply as what's a report? How do we do a report? Not something big, 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 but something even basic would be great. Yeah. So that, that, that's where I went to additional learnings. Thank you so much, Florence. You want to say something? I just want to add something. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. Um, I forgot to also say, sorry, and I'll be quick, is that we didn't also just, because of uh, because of Wiki Loves Africa and because of um, the ESA campaign, we also managed to, or tool, we managed to also allow for 
um, aligned, uh, aligned projects to get involved at the same time, which mean, meant that it wasn't just Wikipedia editions. There was also, um, we, it just so happened <laughs> that, uh, that the, the theme for Wiki Loves Africa was climate and weather. So it did contribute also visually. So we could get visual contributions as well as, um, to scripts contributions as well. So there was like a, we'd had a multi layered kind of campaign that ran. Um, and I think that also helped people so that they could find their niche, you know, so they could do, contribute in ways that they wish to. Um, and it's not to add to, it was just to show a different way of doing. Thank you, Ayla. Thank you, Frances. Thank you, Fumia. Thank you, Eugene. Um, thank you. Yeah.